of the phage isn't an illness, all right? 25 years ago, I, I found a clock hidden in our DNA, counting down to the day of our extinction. When the clock hits zero, the autophage will erupt in every man, woman, and child on Earth. I, I had to stop it. It's inside everyone. <sighs> yeah, we weren't built to last. Well, it finally happened. After nearly a decade of delay, studio changes, scrap development, passing the baton, and more, Dead Island 2 has gone from rumors to a full release in less than a year. We have covered the Why You Wouldn't Survive scenario of Dead Island before with Pathogen HK back in 2019, but now that the zombie outbreak has expanded its horizons to Los Angeles, or as the game calls it, Hell A, and possibly to further reaches of North America and more, things have shifted dramatically in scale and mutative capabilities. What kind of new threats await us with Pathogen HK's trip to the United States with its new name and citizenship, and more specifically, the types of people you'll find in the City of Angels. Well, you'll cry when angels deserve to die, with a horde of undead committing not-so-self-righteous genocide. Today, we are discussing the development Hell A, a survivor squad consisting of Lenny Kravitz, Somber Overwatch, Machine Gun Kelly, Chun-Li if she was in Mortal Kombat, front page of the sexy firefighter calendar, and Jane Romero if she became a Scottish punk. A gore sister that is probably the most detailed I've seen in ages that I wish I could show you, but YouTube would slap me for demonetization. Why did they replace Phil Lamar as Sam B? Flushest motherfuckers in the city. It's just like no one is. As they got theirs, who gives a shit if the ghetto burns? Who the hell is this guy? And I'm Sam B. You know, who do you voodoo, bitch? <laughs> I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment and I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm simply here to apologize. Why does Jacob scream like this? <laughs> the dude survives the zombie apocalypse. The next stage of humanity is no man. And this is a story all about how I fought a lot of zombies and even a clown. Gotta kill butchers, crushers, and the chick with goofy hair. I'm the zombie king in a town called Bel Air. Today, we are telling you why you wouldn't survive Dead Island 2's autophage zombie outbreak. Before going ahead, please note there will be heavy spoilers for Dead Island 2. You can't really explain the full scope of this virus and why you wouldn't survive it without being spoiler free. So don't complain in the comments. As to not retread too much ground from the first video, the zombie virus's origins hail from the small island of Benoi off the coast of Papua New Guinea, being strongly similar to the real life virus of Kuru that spurred from the ritualistic cannibalization by the four people, hybridizing between the Kuru prion and the HIV virus did it pass test into orangutans before it would break out from its lab trials into the jungles, slums, and then vacation resorts of Hanoi, then to the prison island and neighboring islands where the five survivors that fought through it all to unearth the proto-pandemic secrets washed ashore in the United States. It wasn't until over the course of the next decade after the events of what spurred from Hanoi that the virus would mysteriously find its way into the knowledge and hands of virologist Dr. Reed. From his research, would he purposefully unleash the virus across the greater area of Los Angeles, California, with an intended purpose. Dr. Reed's findings are exactly why this zombie outbreak went from a why you would probably survive in Dead Island 1 to a definitely wouldn't survive in Dead Island 2. Exposure to human hosts, though, would show sporadic and nightmarish results with mutations, degradations, and devastations following in this zombie outbreak's wake. In the time from Dead Island to Riptide to the events of Dead Island 2, the disease once called Pathogen HK now known as the autophage, had taken on new forms, mutations, and a wider threat for what it could do to the human body. It's better to think as Pathogen HK as a sister variant and not a mutation that turned into the autophage. It is a completely different virus with similar capabilities that was probably a precursor to show what was going to happen to humanity. 
While the origins of the virus were a bit muddled up in mystery and speculation with clues drizzled about the island, the CDC's efforts into combating the pandemic definitely gave us a more scientific and detailed explanation into what the virus is. But not only that, its capabilities and exactly what it does to hosts and how it spreads and remains. In Dead Island's beginnings, the zombie virus was mostly your run-of-the-mill undead apocalypse. Runners slowly becoming deteriorated corpses that either rotted to nothing or mutated to into genetic abominations that spread the infection through bites, blood, or other bodily fluids while some humans held a natural immunity to zombification. For most people out there, the genetic lottery of the autophage's transformation on the human body would have you becoming a runner with varying stages of decomposition, a 28 days later like rabid beast sprinting full speed at any healthy host. The mutations within the body coming to a fever pitch as the strain the virus has caused on the body will spur the veins to darken, the eyes to become bloodshot, and the flesh to darken as well as the body begins to decompose slowly. They will erratically look around them as they grasp at their own head, potentially in a constant state of pain that forces their body and mind through high levels of adrenaline that keeps them going. This heightened adrenaline also allowing them to bypass inhibitions of pain and to allow them to sprint without any form of exhaustion, ignoring the body's pleas to rest. Basically, they're just always miserable and angry and looking to slaughter anything they can before the body decomposes enough to where their lethality is lessened. Dismemberment and even heavy damage to the cranial cavity will not deter them. They may be stunned momentarily, but they will merely get back up for the impact and continue their onslaught, whether it be on the ground or armless, these foes won't be harmless. They retain high levels of dexterity and even a modicum of self-preservation as they can dodge well-telegraphed attacks from adversaries. Because of their rapid, rapid, ravage nature, avoiding getting bitten or having their blood or saliva dripped on you will be difficult in the long run. Now, if runners are allowed to live in this form long enough, then the decomposition of their body will begin to settle in their frame, rotting their joints, forcing them to become slower, and their previous reaction times slowed down as well, becoming walkers. Their mental capabilities have been deteriorated enough to where just a sluggish pace is most of what they can muster besides being able to grab onto survivors to bite them. Now that the overwhelming adrenaline from their previous form has all but faded, remnants of their humanity can sometimes be seen as they mindlessly roam the world. Some can be found rummaging through trash, while others will simply sit on benches and rest. They can also surprise attack survivors by seemingly coming out of nowhere, whether it be being buried upon death or putting themselves underground, they can emerge from sand and dirt as if rising from their graves to attack the living. They'll also wedge themselves into tight spaces to maneuver their way into safe havens and closed spaces by using manholes and air vents. Their threat is basically that of any generic zombie, being durable as hell, taking tons of damage with a blow to the head being critical, and their largest threat being in their numbers if they're allowed to gather. Their deterioration doesn't slow down over time as their rotting flesh will accelerate their forms into figures known as shamblers. These are even slower zombies barely able to even walk, let alone function, with their organs and everything else barely being held together. Their threat level is the least of what you will have to worry about in the long run, but mimic of what much of its predecessor, the walker, can achieve. All forms of these basic infected are easily distracted by open sources of flesh to eat. If a human that they are attacking is right before them, an easier way of consumption will take priority as they feast. Meat bait will be something that they go after and they will ignore survivors. Loud sounds will attract them if made as they come by the dozens. These zombies are what you would expect from a zombie apocalypse. Some of them also offer different deadly capabilities depending on their clothing, line of work as a living person, and certain mutations. Electricians that turn can have the virus harbor the electricity they worked around to be compiled within their body. Upon seeing prey or upon death, they will let out large bursts of electricity in the surrounding area to stun and potentially send survivors into cardiac arrest. Riot police that turn can have the armor that they wore in their previous life protect their zombie form against most types of trauma. Some zombies exposed to extremely high heat environments and bonfires can have the autophage restructure their form to turn into burning variants. Not only being immune to all kinds of fire from the, even the highest napalm strikes, but they can have their bodies being constantly on fire without charring away the flesh through unknown metabolic processes. Simply walking near flammable substances can ignite them and cause them to explode. Even if you avoid being bitten, you'll be delivered a swift case of third-degree burns. 
Beekeepers and those working with insects can have the autophage infect the very pests that they worked with to build a hive within their own torso of the variant called the Swarmwalker. Once prey has been targeted by this Swarmwalker, it can send its infected insect swarms to attack survivors to disorient them and even infect them. Being swarmed by these hostile bugs will have you distracted long enough for other zombies to gather around you and overwhelm you, but even then being bitten by these bugs will have you infected and marked for death. Infected that have walked through sharp objects like broken glass, barbed wire, and blades can have the objects wedged into their flesh and melded, causing them to slice you up just for attacking them while also cutting you up if you are snagged in their grasp. They cannot bleed out as their frame has adapted to sharp objects being in the body, and if cut by their body's extremities, the blood drenched in them will seep into your body and infect you. But after all that, these are just the most basic of units that you would be facing in your everyday survival. Stronger variations will be out there. Thanks to the mutative capabilities of the autophage, special infected, otherwise known as apex variants, will begin to crop up. Depending on the genealogy, anatomy, lifestyle, and other environmental elements. The first of which being the crusher forms. Developing from brawny and strong people, this Adonis of a man or woman will have the autophage ramp up muscular production. Their strength and layers of pure muscle will make them withstand hellish amounts of damage while also allowing them to slam the ground repeatedly to cause shockwaves to knock anything nearby off their feet. Their tenacity is superhuman as they can break through many defenses and can even easily crush the skull of a human with one hand without any difficulty. If someone that harbors the necessary body type to become a crusher is also exposed to a similar environment as a burning walker, then the fire will also become a tool of what is known as the Inferno Crusher. Its flesh blackened and charred. It will be impervious to any kind of flame. It will utilize the metabolic process within to summon fire to coat its arms so its punches can ignite its foes. The pound it makes not only releasing a stunning shot shockwave, but a plume of flames to set any nearby survivor on fire. If the person infected with the autophage is overweight, suffers glandular problems, or heavy acid reflux, then the disease will bloat the body to a disgustingly grotesque form known as the slobber. The slobber's body will be restructured to create consistent volumes of highly corrosive acid that it can projectile vomit large distances to eat away the flesh of survivors and slow their movements as their joints and skin are destroyed, but also using the acid to melt away firearms and melee weapons to make them largely unusable. Yes, it does. it's not a mechanic in the game, but that would actually happen. They'll even spew acid directly in front of them to prevent survivors from approaching them to attack them directly. If they grab you, they won't attempt to sink their teeth in your flesh, but instead will just drool volumes of the acid directly on your face and torso to maximize the corrosive material's killing capability. If exposed to tons of fire during its evolution, or possibly if you're just a really sick rapper, then you'll become what's known as a firestorm slobber. The notorious F. IRE will have its noxious fluids become flammable and, once ejected from its mouth, will ignite, instantly causing it to literally spit hot fire to set you ablaze and burn down any flammable defense you have in the way. Since their flamethrower-like breath can be indefinitely used, wildfires in foliage-rich areas and most fortified compounds could be set ablaze rather easily, weeding out survivors to run out into the hordes of the undead outside. If exposed to highly decayed environments, Environments with tons of bodies nearby during its evolution, a putrefied slobber can be born, its torso bursting open with what looks like maggot wriggling growths draping out of it. It will harness the bile production within into blobs of biomass that it will hurl out long distances. The biomass will hit critical mass over a short time or if in proximity to a healthy survivor and explode bone shrapnel and explosive gas material to knock survivors off their feet and severely injure them. Easily infecting them in the process. Putrefied slobbers can also leave these bile bombs scattered in environments as a veritable landmine to catch unwary survivors off guard and kill them when they're just walking around. Now if a woman with an active lifestyle like running, roller derbying, or anything that requires high stamina is exposed to the autophage, they can mutate into screamers. Due to their higher lung capabilities, the autophage will manipulate the bronchi to grow dangerously to overtake much of the torso so, because of this growth, the screamer earns its namesake by screaming at high enough decibels that it can hold back attackers just through sheer force. 
potentially bursting their eardrums and causing extensive damage to the body from sheer sound. The sound it creates will also attract all nearby zombies of all types in the area. Its hands will also sporadically cause the finger bones to grow and sharpen at its ends to adorn razor-like claws to rip survivors to shreds if they grow close enough. Upon transformation, if a screamer is exposed to a highly electric environment like a power plant or even a downed power line, it can become a voltaic screamer. Its brain electrically charged indefinitely, it can imbue its vocal shock waves with electrifying results. Becoming even louder than its counterparts, the sound waves it projects will have the air be electrically charged to jolt anyone in front of its shell. If open bodies of water or liquids are nearby, then the conductive substances will instantly electrify and jolt survivors in an instant. And these sound waves will also render many electronics unusable in an instant. Now, for people with violent tendencies, they will have their muscular structures strengthened as the arms are disfigured to have the bone protrude outwards to sharpen at its ends to become blades for the apex variant known as the Butcher. Its strong legs allow it to run at high speeds and attempt to slice up survivors and pin them down with its spear-like arms. Advancing from the dexterity of the runners, it can avoid all kinds of incoming damage, even gunfire, by blocking it all with its blade-like arms, showing even its bones have been reinforced to withstand much trauma. If it does end up taking enough bodily harm, it will avoid conflict and seek out corpses nearby and consume their flesh even in the midst of battle. If this is achieved, its own flesh will regenerate sporadically to heal itself. For psychopaths and violent criminals, they will mutate into a more hyper-aggressive form known as the Vicious Butcher. Borrowing its flame immunity from other variants, it can withstand even more damage as its spear arms are now covered in even more razor-sharp growths. Not only will it eat dead bodies to heal itself, but if it even manages to rip into your flesh with its appendages, the flesh from you will automatically meld into its own form, allowing it to heal itself. If this thing isn't taken down, it can mow through hordes of people and shrug off anything that harms it in a short amount of time. People with mental disorders that lean towards schizophrenia, suicidal depression, or just overactive minds can have the autophage create bloated tumors that engulf much of the right torso, becoming bursters. The growth on this body swelling with explosive volatile gas and highly infectious black icor. While it is frail and a tad slow, causing any kind of trauma to its frame will cause it to blow up, spreading its virulent fluids in all directions and even the sheer act of contacting skin will in infect nearby survivors. If open flames, acid, or electricity are caught within this explosion, the black eye core will harness that element and promptly ignite to cause more of that specified damage. If it spots a healthy survivor, it will shamble towards them at a faster pace, and once it gets close enough, will have its body self-destruct with the sole purpose of spreading the disease above all else. This is also the only known infected type to still speak a language to some degree. It can be heard muttering the words, Help me. Once it sees a survivor and right before it self-detonates, it will shout out the words, As seen in a post-game side mission, it's possible the Bursters retain intellect to somewhat speak thanks to still somewhat being sentient, at least within their own minds. Reading the mind of survivor behind a door, it says that it wants to be helped, that voices speak to it, that something greater is coming. I was awakened. It's in my head! I can... It needs me to be free. I need to get out of here. To show... Uh, I need to share all... I was bitten, but we're different. Chosen. Only when it spots a healthy host will its mentality change instantly and begin to approach them. They want you to, that. to help. Another one. To help Gotta me. get that poor guy out of us. <laughs> will you help them too? What these voices are and what they mean will be discussed very soon. Now, the last of the Apex variants is a hellish amalgamation of nearly all other Apex variants, but from far away doesn't seem more harmless than a common walker. The Mutator will roam the world, attempting to blend in with hordes to seem like a common zombie. But once it spots prey or is damaged enough, will sporadically evolve and mutate into a necromorph-like beast. Its torso bursting open, growing outwards as its left arm spews out a giant blade of bone and its left arm becoming Hulk-like 
like in stature. The true nightmare of this creature is the gaping maw of its phlegm-filled ribcage acting as a giant mouth. Withstanding the most amounts of damage compared to all of its other brothers and sisters, this beast can utilize the special abilities of the Crusher's immense strength and earth-pounding shockwaves, the eviscerating dismemberment of the Butcher's arm blade, and can even utilize the forceful projections of the Screamer and Slobber to shoot out its own bones from its torso to send jagged shrapnel-like bullets to riddle survivors from afar. If it is able to close the distance on a survivor, it will drag them into its gaping maw to sink its teeth like ribcage into your flesh until your body is bitten in half and consumed. What spurs someone to become a mutator is probably due to either them having all forms of genetic predispositions or through scientific experimentation gone wrong. But coming face to face with it will surely mean death in over a dozen different ways. Ripping through all defenses as it slogs its abomination of a body through all to rip and tear. Some variants have also been noted to crop up known as re-ubernators, being mutators with a much larger frame and tendency for killing to a much more efficient degree. These Apex variants, as noted by one Dr. Kelly, are also able to be made through apparent natural geomagnetic forces produced by the Earth itself, meaning all the previously discussed predispositions to become a certain Apex variant could also just be completely up to the geomagnetic forces at play in a certain area at a given time. Now, if that explanation of the many different forms of zombies that will be cropping up across the landscape wasn't enough to convince you that you wouldn't survive, try Trust me, it keeps getting much worse. Some of you out there would note that Pathogen HK and its younger brother, the Autophage, can have a lucky few be immune to its zombification effects. In fact, those one in a million chosen carry the virus within them and reap benefits from it as well. A symbiotic coexistence of the Autophage will cause a carrier to harness enhanced strength, increase their lung capacity to not only have enhanced stamina, but also produce loud shock waves much like the Screamer, create ground pound shockwaves like the Crusher, and even thrust themselves forward at fast speeds to punch enemies with incredible force. Their durability and healing capabilities will also ramp up, making them able to fight consistently without ramping down. If spurred to a violent state, they can enter a state of mind known as Fury, where the full embrace of their zombie side will take hold, becoming stark raving mad and being able to easily disembowel and dismember foes with just pure sweat wipes of their arms. In this state, they can also spew acidic bile. These superhuman beings have become what they have self-labeled as Newmans. Considering themselves the next genetic step of man, weeded out by the plague that turns the unworthy into mindless zombies. Currently working in the shadows attempting to enlist those of similar fortitude, they can speak to each other telepathically and can easily discern who is a human or not based on dark vein-like markings on each other's faces that only they can see. These Newmans view the autophage as a necessary step in the life cycle of society and humanity in general. If you feel like you are just built different and can become one of these elusive Newman, well, they have described that many people have undergone what can only be described as a test. During the process of Newmanification, a host will feel head-pounding pulses, visions of other Newmen, red-drenched vision, and debilitating convulsions. A host will teeter on the brink of retaining their humanity and becoming a full, ravenous zombie repeatedly. During these mental blackouts, the host will attack anyone nearby and potentially spread the virus in the process as any zombie would. During that time, you could be killed by healthy survivors that are just trying to defend themselves, or you could regain consciousness, but what prevents the failure of new manification is completely unknown. But many Newmans and infected people before they fully turn have noted voices speaking to them, entities of unknown origin. Those that fail will lose all humanity and become a zombie or most likely an apex variant serving the undead army with its goal of devouring any human it can find. It's very possible that the Newmans, the Slayers of Dead Island 2 meet, are just standing back to witness the feats of the Slayers and attempt to sway them to their side. It's also very possible that these Newmans are intentionally causing events to happen that allow the virus to spread even further. Intelligent superhumans that actively consider the autophage as a necessity that should not be stopped and want it to spread further to create more of their kind would be nigh unstoppable. We are the end point. Humanity 
distilled. There is some cataclysm level shit coming down the line. It won't wait. And it's not kind. Only Newman, like us, can carry humanity through it. There is no plague. Humans. The autophage. Newman. It's an immense life cycle. A survival mechanism spanning countless eons. And you, we, are the Omega Point. Being able to work together and communicate telepathically to coordinate plans to bring down safe havens is a nightmare on Earth. They want to test every person on the planet to enter the next stage of mankind's evolution. But what are they working for? What are they working towards? What are these voices? Are these Newmans connected in an otherworldly way? Well, graffiti shown in the LA sewers depict illustrations of Lovecraftian horrors beyond our comprehension. Human figures all intertwined and connected into an amorphous blob above, a collective consciousness at the helm of all affected by the autophage. Now, this leads me to believe the total efforts of the autophage are creating a hive mind intelligence akin to that of Halo's Flood or Dead Space's Necromorphs, but to a much smaller scale with similar methods to that of Back for Blood's Bloodworm. This is accentuated by the fact that the flesh of the dead can be compiled in mounds of biomass accumulating in closed off areas over time. During the outbreak of Los Angeles in the CDC's desperate efforts to destroy any and all of the infected deceased, pools of highly corrosive acid were made to try and melt away their bodies till nothing was left but bloody chunks. But you know what they did with this biohazardous material? They pumped it all into the Los Angeles sewers since the chaos of the pandemic left them with very little option and time. Getting this infectious material out of the reach of civilians was priority one. They were able to evacuate millions, but their efforts would prove to be counterintuitive. Little did they know that sending all of this biohazardous material into the sewers would cause the worst aspects of the autophages reach to spur forth. With all that melted biomass being pumped below, it rapidly started to clump together as many festering growths adorned walls and structures. This fusion of blood, guts, bone, and matter was a nesting ground for the undead, and we just made it stronger by trying to eradicate it and dispose of it quickly. Unlike Dead Space, Halo, or Back for Blood, this biomass doesn't necessarily create new forms of infected or monsters. Instead, it acts as a place of harborage for the dead, and could very well be the growing source of these voices, being the very hive mind that speaks to those it wishes to test for new minification. Because of its expanding reach underground, its previously noted interaction with geomagnetic forces allow the biomass to create high-magnitude earthquakes above to cause further chaos and disassemble the structures of society so that undead can more easily overwhelm populations. If the nest feels disturbed or in peril in any way, shape, or form, the biomass will send out a wide-scale mental signal to all autophage infected and zombies to descend on the threat all at once to wipe them out. That's right, attempting to destroy the zombie outbreak could lead to festering flesh nests that can cause earthquakes and tsunamis and have a stronger influence on these Newmans while also being able to moderately call upon the hordes of undead. No matter what these zombies, intelligent or not, dead or alive, will find some way to try and put a coordinated and destructive effort into ending your life. But again, we still haven't reached the apex of what the autophage actually is, and ultimately why you wouldn't survive. They can create earthquakes, tsunamis, and mutate, and there is the superhumans, but that is not the worst part of this virus, as inevitably, all human life on Earth will either become a zombie, Apex variant, or a Newman, no matter how hard they try, no matter what they do, or how well fortified or safe they are. The reason being is haunting. Through words of his own 25 years ago, Dr. Reed's research had found an anomaly within all of mankind's DNA. 
His research into the autophage would find that the virus was inherently and dormantly within all of humanity, whether it be through natural evolution that has always been carried in all of man, or an airborne variant of the sister part of pathogen HK that discreetly infected every homo sapien on Earth, the virus was always a part of us without our knowing. The concrete fact of the matter was that a veritable biological countdown was ticking down to zero within all of us, within every man, woman, and child. Eventually, everyone will succumb to the effect of the autophage turning spontaneously without any warning. It could happen at any moment. Hence why the virus was labeled the autophage. It is an automatic response for every homo sapien. Dr. Reed desperately tried to make a cure from the DNA and blood samples of the Newman class of man, and even purposefully injected the embryo of his own daughter to gestate with the biophage in order for a natural cure to be developed in her body. But in the chaos of it all, the uncertainty of our future, and the unethical standard present with this experimentation, that cure will most likely never come or be widely distributed. Dr. Reed himself was part part of these trials, but ended up making himself not a Newman or a carrier, but becoming the re the evolved form of the mutator capable of more death and destruction than any other mindless zombie or apex variant before it. Attempts at a cure could very well make things worse and make the worst zombies possible. At the end of the day, the autophage of Dead Island 2 proves you wouldn't survive. From the early days of the typical zombie outbreak, being infected by the apex variants that can break through all defenses, the Newmans working in the shadows to push the autophage influence, and even the indiscernible full capabilities of the autophage biomass growing further and causing earth-shifting effects that cause natural disasters is another tier of apocalyptic scenario. And if you are somehow able to weather through all of everything I just discussed, well, you were only delaying the inevitable. The autophage rests within your DNA right now, and someday, very soon, it will awaken without warning nor way of prevention. The only way of survival is having the mental fortitude and the genetic makeup to pass the test of the Newman hive mind's influence in to becoming a Newman yourself. Even then, if you do not adhere to the mindset of the growing group of Newmans out there, well, you will probably just be wiped out by them because it will be a numbers game at that point and a group of these Newmans fighting you down will easily take you out. Zombies will take over the earth, the dead endlessly feasting on the dead, the biomass growing without resistance, the Newman being at the helm of a consciousness beyond our comprehension. But you, as you are, will no longer exist when that time comes. All continents will fall and become one after another, known as a dead island. That about wraps up this bleak look into what Dead Island has turned into underneath the skin of what looked and acted like a goofy zombie hack and slash type game. Did I get too philosophical? Did I ramble too much or not make much sense? What do you make of this autophage outbreak and how would you attempt to survive it all? Because again, that ain't happening. I doubt you'll be a Newman. Thanks for watching as we gear up for more zombie oriented content as I embrace the zombie side of my channel going forward. Also, if you noticed my voice might be a little hoarse, I've been sick, so I've been trying to power through this script. Now, if you want to help me out and become a supporter of the channel, you can by becoming a patron or YouTube channel member, and you can have your name featured on this fancy list here. All I really ask is for your view, though, and your time is valuable, so thanks for wasting it with me. I plan on making a comprehensive retrospective on Dead Island 2 in the far future, but I'm just going to wait till the DLCs all come out for it and for me to get past the honeymoon phase because I'm on my second playthrough of it now. So check back in a year or so for that. My outro rambling is Please have a wonderful day and be good to each other. You never know when you could suddenly become a zombie, so leave good memories with those you love. Stay happy, stay healthy, and never forget to 
Say it with me now. Stay well. Shrunken head, broken legs, body parts on the concrete. Cut them up, butcher style gators in the swamp. Red light, leave them dead, running like a track meet. Scared of nobody, what your motherfuckers want. Believe me when I tell them I'm a boogeyman beast. Leave them slash from their head to their feet. Pin bricks to the chest of a bitch, well fed. Cooking meat, cannibal, trying to eat. I got a zombie on me, and you can't harm me. Yeah, who do you voodoo, bitch? Drink blood like a vampire without warning. Who do you voodoo, 